Every year for centuries, they came to the Grand Banks off Newfoundland. They left with their holes full of fish and their hearts full of special memories. Good evening, I'm Tom Kennedy. They were known as the White Fleet, dozens of Portuguese schooners that came to fish off the coast of Newfoundland. They were part of the fabric of summer life in St. John's. Most Newfoundlanders over the age of 40 remember them well. In fact, I am one of them. Today, most of the fishing schooners are gone. The tradition shared by Newfoundland and Portugal disappeared with them until this summer with the voyage of the Crayola, the last of the White Fleet. On a beautiful day this summer, the streets of Aveiro and other fishing towns in central Portugal were almost empty. The canals, normally busy with small boats, calm and quiet as well. The reason was because almost everyone in this region was down at the dock, there to see and to remember an important piece of their past that they shared with another country that they know here as an old friend. Have a good voyage, the message reads. It's directed at 48 young people from both Portugal and Canada. They were chosen to be part of this project, to try to re-establish that old friendship. One of them, a local girl, Andrea Bella Cardoso, watching from a nearby boat, two generations of her family, some of whom made the same voyage. Also here, Francisco Marx, a retired sea captain who spent much of his life doing just as he is now. Towering over this event is a single ship named the Criola. It's a Navy training vessel now, one of the last of the old fishing schooners. For the young people in the crowd, it is, in a sense, history. For the older people, it is a familiar memory of a time when thousands of people would gather in the same spot. The waterfront would be lined with dozens of ships just like this one, all destined for the same place. Terranova. And for one last time, the Crayola was going back. In a sense, the people of the region were waving goodbye to what used to be a way of life. When the old schooners would depart, 60 fishermen or so per ship, for what was called the campaign. The men would leave every spring. They'd not see their families for six months. That's the time it would take to fill the holes with cod caught off the Grand Banks of Newfoundland and then return to Portugal. For me and other Newfoundlanders of my generation, this project provokes a vivid memory. When the Portuguese schooners would arrive on the East Coast. When the men would go out day after day in small dories, staying out until each boat was full of cod. That time is now in the past, relegated to memories and to museums. The day before the departure of the Criola, the Canadians and Portuguese who are to make the voyage visit the local fishing museum. Among them, Zé Samois Rey, whose relatives fished off Newfoundland for generations. Many of their photographs are on display here. Okay, I know this, this one is my grandfather. This is my father, and this is my uncle. Your father went to St. John's a lot as well. Many times. And to be just, my father used to know your grandfather. My grandfather. Before he died back in the 40s, he worked for a St. John's company that supplied the Portuguese vessels. But that's not the only connection. Zay's wife, Jane, is back in Newfoundland. She's also my sister. It was only years later that Jane and Zay discovered the old ancestral connection. 
well, I didn't have a picture of him, and I asked my Aunt Isabel, and she gave me a lovely portrait of him, which I took to Portugal and showed uh, Zay's father, and as soon as he saw the picture, he knew my grandfather. At sea, the escort of hundreds of small boats has turned back to shore. Now there are thousands of kilometers and three weeks of sailing between here and the Grand Banks. The schooners were called the White Fleet because of the color they were painted during the Second World War, a way to try to let the commanders of patrolling German U-boats know that the schooners were harmless, neutral fishing vessels. So much history, but for a moment, the young people making this trip can put it aside. The voyage of the Criola was the idea of Canada's ambassador to Portugal. The Portuguese Navy agreed, and organizers went to work in Newfoundland and Portugal, believing that in this, the International Year of the Ocean, it would be worth reminding people of their past, particularly those who may be too young to remember the old ties to Newfoundland. But Andrea Cardoso does remember, her family's connection was just too strong to forget. My father is the captain uh, in a cod fishing boat. My grandfather is the captain and my gr great-grandfather, one of my great-grandfathers was a captain and the other was a cook. That's okay now. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my family is all connected to the sea. Fernando Cardoso is Andrea's father. He works on a modern fishing vessel now. He may be the last Cardoso to work as a fisher. She wants to feel in the, in the skin uh, the, the risks that we, we had, the risks that I felt and the risks that the, her grandfather, you know, the, her grandfather and the, the father of his, her grandfather, they, they, they felt. And her grandfather, Carlos Alberto Bela. As a young man, he made the cod campaign to Newfoundland many times. He was captain of this schooner. Oxalá que esta visita do Crioula recomece com os laços de amizade que antigamente existiam entre nós. After four days at sea, we get our first glimpse of land, the Azores, a group of islands discovered and settled by the Portuguese in the 15th century. It's also the traditional stop of the Crioula while en route to Newfoundland. The crew prepares for arrival. Among them, Sean Chidley, a young Newfoundlander who comes from Renews, one of many outports named by Portuguese fishermen centuries ago. All the generations of my family before me worked on the sea. My father works on the sea. My grandparents worked on the sea. My, every relation that I have work, works on the sea some way or another. And here I am on the sea now on a tall ship. The Azores are a welcome break from the monotony of the ocean, just as they've been for centuries. The Criola stays in the area for several days. Time for some R&R &R before continuing its voyage west. The days stretch out, often marked by the visits of the ocean-dwelling curate. For the young people on board, it's all new. For one old man, it's an emotional brush with nostalgia. Francisco Marx was captain of the Criola the last time it went to Newfoundland in 1973. The dining room he sits in was once his. Um navio, no seu aspecto exterior, na sua mastriação, não mudou. Inclusivamente, este lugar está precisamente como, como nos tempos antigos. É o mesmo lugar, com a mesma mesa, as mesmas cadeiras, as mesmas portas, a mesma cor, o mesmo candeeiro, está precisamente como no tempo em que eu embarquei. The neophytes adopt the old ways and work habits. Four hour shifts, helping to do all the jobs required on a sailing vessel, the same way it would have been done by the generations of fishermen that preceded them. At first glance, the Newfoundlanders and the Portuguese here have almost nothing, not even a language in common. But just beneath the surface is history. Newfoundlanders and Portuguese almost fish beside each other is almost like a body team. 
so they, they Saudi have a bit big uh, impact on the heritage of each other too. The shared history goes way, way back. In fact, in 1500, the explorer Corte Real named Newfoundland land of the King of Portugal. It wasn't the land that interested the Europeans as much as the fish in the seas around it. And the Portuguese have been making this same trek along this same route in ships not much different than this one for nearly 500 years.